Hello students, and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Level Human Geography course. Today we're going to be looking at the final part of population change, and this is all going to be about settlements. What is a settlement? There are different parts to a geographical area, and a city in the geographical area is made up of these settlements. Each one has their own characteristics. There is the inner city, the suburbs, the rural urban fringe, and the rural area. So what do they look like? In the center of the city, we have the inner city, and this is the place that is closer to all the businesses and places where people work. On the outskirts of this, we have the suburbs, and the suburbs have different characteristics to the inner city. Further away from the suburbs, and even further away from the inner city, we have the rural urban fringe. And then on the outskirts of that, we have the rural area, which isn't really part of the city anymore, but is just on the outskirts of everything leading towards it. Settlement characteristics. These are all the different characteristics of each settlement. Have a go at pausing the video and then being able to copy these down, but we're also going to talk through it now. Housing tends to change from the inner city to the rural area. There's more housing and the town houses are more densely located in the inner city. As we move out, there is less housing, however, it becomes larger and more spaced out. Ethnicity is more diverse and there's a high portion of the ethnicities in the inner city. As we move out, there tends to be less ethnicity in the suburbs, the rural urban fringe and the rural areas. This is generally because sort of different places of worship are built around the inner city and that makes people want to live there. For example, there's more churches, mosques and synagogues that are built near the town centre, so more people live around there. Also, age structure differs between the inner city and all the other settlement types. The younger people tend to live in the inner city because they are students and there are more jobs there for them to be able to take up that are not as important. In the suburbs, there tends to be more families that are older and also have children because they want to have more space for the children to grow up in, so they move out and get a house there. This goes the same for the rural urban fringe and the rural area. Wealth tends to change from the inner city all the way up to the rural area as well. People are less um, wealthy in the inner city because the jobs there are statistically less important than they could be in the other areas. People in the suburbs and the rural urban fringe earn more than the people in the inner city because the jobs that they have are ones that involve commuting to another area or working from home where they can make more money. However, in the rural area this changes because people can earn less depending on the job they have. There tends to be more work in jobs which aren't very developed, such as farming, so as a result people could probably learn less money than they do in the suburbs or rural urban fringe. Employment also changes from the inner city to the rural area. There's higher unemployment in the inner city, which is weirdly because um, you wouldn't expect that in such a busy area. However, it is true because so many people live there, there are a lot of people who don't have a job. Most of the employment in this area is in the secondary or tertiary sector. In the suburbs, there's even lower unemployment and it's mostly tertiary work. And in the rural urban fringe, there's even lower unemployment and again, it's mostly tertiary. However, in the rural area, there is a lot of primary and secondary jobs involved, such as with farming. The provision of services also changes in all the settlement types. There are more services and more transport due to the amount of um, places there are and services and buildings there are in the inner city. Then as we move out, there's even less services and less transport because less people live there and there are less places that you have to go to. Impact of characteristics on welfare. There's a lot more crime in the inner city seeing as there is less employment. As a result, people have these jobs and other people who don't have a job have nothing to do and they're not getting incomes. So as a result, people resort to crime in order to be able to get either the money or the subsistence they need. There's also more air pollution in the inner city as there are more transport links so they can pollute more when they're used. There are more religious sites in the inner city due to the greater diverse um, proportion of ethnic minorities. And the quality of environment tends to suffer in the inner city because the environment quality suffers from everyone either polluting or littering and the amount of waste generated in the inner city is greater than that in the rural areas. Here you have some questions to do with settlement characteristics and settlement types. Have a go at pausing the video and attempting all of these questions, and then whenever you're ready, hit play to move on to see the answers. Here are the answers. 
If you got all of these right, congratulations. I'd advise you to check out another topic which you're unsure on in the channel. However, if you did not, be sure to revise the video and go over everything that you may have missed out. Join us next time where we're going to be looking at a different topic completely, which is all about energy issues, because this is the end of Unit 1, which is all to do with population change. You can also check out www.revisealevel.co.uk where we have all the information you need to know on population change in AS Human Geography. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.